Welcome back once again to the Imaginary Gallery. It's TJ, your host. Tonight, we are on the seventh in the list of the ten types of abusive people, which comes from this book. Why does he do that? Inside the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men, Women, or Other by Lundy Bancroft. Number seven on the list is called Rambo. Rambo is aggressive with everyone, not just its partner. He or she gets a thrill out of the sensation of intimidating people and strives to handle all of life's situations by subtly or overtly creating fear. This type of person would have an exaggerated, stereotypical view of what a man should be or what a woman should be, which goes hand in hand in the case of a man being what it's supposed to be seeing a woman as a delicate and inferior person in need of protection. Rambo comes from a home or a neighborhood where it was the target of violence itself and somehow in this process learned that the only way to feel safe is to be tougher, stronger, and less caring than everybody else. He doesn't have or she doesn't have very much patience for weakness, indecision, or fragility. The Rambo type usually has a criminal record which involves things like violence and theft, drug dealing, driving intoxicated. Early in a relationship, this Rambo type is likely to be loving and friendly, kind to its partner, like most abusive persons. <laughs> because this type of creature lacks fear, or pretends to, it can make a woman or a man feel safe and feel protected. This style of abusive person can therefore be particularly appealing to anyone who comes from a violent home, him or herself, or to someone who is in the process of leaving another abusive relationship. Isn't that sweet? Rambo can make you feel as though its aggressiveness would never be directed towards you because it loves you. It wishes to look after your safety as if you were its daughter or son. It enjoys the role of protector, feeling like a strong knight in shining armor. However, in this case it says he lacks respect for women, and this disrespect, combined along with its general violent tendencies, means that it's only a matter of time before he will be the one that you need to be protected from. Many highly masculine men are not Rambos. The notion that all macho men are likely to abuse ladies is based largely on class and ethnic prejudice. The same misconceptions that allow that Mr. Sensitive we talked about before, or Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright, to skate by undetected. There are plenty of tough guys out there who are friendly to everybody and avoid aggressive interactions whenever possible. But they enjoy lifting weights, playing tough sports, hunting, and other stereotypical masculine things. They might be good fighters, but only if it's in self-defense. It isn't macho that women need to watch out for. The danger signs are violence and intimidation towards anyone and disrespect superiority towards women. And you can switch the pronouns around. I, I'm getting tired of trying to mess up sometimes. But sometimes the Rambo is a psychopath or a sociopath which can make him or her all the more emotionally abusive and in some cases physically abusive as well. In the box. He states the central attitudes driving Rambo would be strength and aggressiveness, good. Compassion and conflict resolution, bad. Anything that could be remotely associated with homosexuality, including walking away from possible violence or showing any kind of fear or any kind of grief, must be avoided at all costs. Femininity, if it's a man, associates with gays are inferior. Women are here to serve men and be protected by them. Men should never hit a lady because it's unmanly to do so. However, there are exceptions that can be made for my own partner if her behavior is bad enough. Men need to learn to keep their women in line. You are a thing that belongs to me. An object akin to a trophy. I am the narcopath, and you're not.
Oh God, I've got a little extra time. I've been able to go through some of TJ's things and some of the stuff he's been doing, videos, off. oh my God, I found this book. <laughs> Why does he do that? Well honey, it don't apply to me because I'm a she. But when I was a he, I did some of this stuff and I think, who writes these books? We don't want our secrets known. I was reading one about the water torturer and thought that's what I did to my exes. It talks about how they, well, they do whatever we do, and then when the partner expresses concern, we show a normal straight face and you misunderstanding something. And they fall for it and they end up going crazy. Like I'd be identified doing something I shouldn't. And I would just tell the story a whole different way. And when the partner kept after me, I'd say, honey, you're crazy. Just like it says here. You fly off the handle at nothing. That was one of my lines. Who wrote this book? <laughs> and yes, I always convinced other people that you were the one who was mentally ill because you acted so nervous and I acted so normal. <laughs> because I'm great. <laughs> I always acted calm. Even when we were having arguments in public, and I always stayed calm, and you were the one who always flipped the lid and jumped out and screamed. <laughs> I'd look to my friends or your friends that I made, and I'd say, See, I told you, he's unstable. And it worked. What else? I know how to get under your skin. Oh, you better believe. In case you didn't know, I took inventory when we first met when I was, as you call it, love bombing you. I listened to your sensitivity. I could tell which things meant the most to you when you talked about how evil your ex was, and I knew I was going to do ten times better than that ex. But of course, to you, I said, oh, what a terrible thing. That ex is awful. Oh, I'm so much better. I would never do anything like that to you. And you fell for it. Ah! <laughs> Would you give me a break? I didn't count how many times you called me when I was gone. I know I was busy, but I was trying to think. I was all by myself. There hasn't been anyone else since you. I don't know why you're still so paranoid. Maybe this was a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't have come back. You're still the same. Oh. Stupid me, I thought maybe we could work something out, but it's clear you're still the same jerk you always were. Don't ever talk to me again! I'm through with that! Come here. Come here. What's the matter? So what? I thought you'd be proud of my new lesbian lifestyle. It doesn't mean you and I still can't have fun like we used to, if you know what I mean. My new lover, uh, which I don't have, is nowhere to be found, so I'm all yours. <laughs> 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 <laughs>